Happy Treff Talks Tuesday. Um, for those who don't know, for almost a year, two years, uh, we held Tulsa Talk Thursdays um, for a long while, giving weekly updates and just uh, kind of galvanizing the Tulsa Real Estate Fund audience. And we are bringing that back under a new mantra, Treff Talks Tuesdays. Um, as we are the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, I'm uh, one of the spokesmen. Jay Morrison, CEO and founder of the historic Tulsa Real Estate Fund, uh, the first and largest black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of the country. So um, we're hosting this uh, multi-live stream and podcast and really a, a free webinar to continue to talk and teach about our movement, the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, um, this country's first black-owned real estate crowdfund. And what work that we're actually doing, um, what we're imploring you guys to be a part of and, and joining us on his mission and our vision um, for empowering, uh, economically empowering uh, marginalized communities and practicing group economics in real life. And this fund is totally inspired by the homage and history of Black Wall Street of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and all the many Black Wall Streets from around the country. And uh, Raleigh, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and in, in Salem, and in, uh, in Virginia, and Richmond, and Columbus, Ohio, and uh, on Sweet Auburn here in Atlanta. I'm doing Black Wall Streets in Newark, New Jersey. There's Black Wall Streets all over the country, whether it's self-sustaining communities, uh, people of African descent who were handling their own business and controlling their own dollars, controlling their own community, their own economy. Um, in this particular community of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, one of the most prolific communities, which was uh, over 36 square blocks of 2,000 homes and businesses, all black owned, that community was uh, massacred, bombed, and burned down on June 21st of 1921. Um, I, I lead by saying that because that's the spirit of, and that's where the spark came from for us to um, facilitate this particular fund. And so I welcome all you guys to learn more about Tulsa. I um, welcome all 10,000 plus of my Tulsa Real Estate Fund partners and um, you know, salute to all of you all, Treff Life for Life, um, all those who partake in um, owning shares and equity of this historic company um, so that we can go do the work of revitalization, of funding our own deals, of acquiring our own deals, of economic empowerment, um, sharing the risk but, risk, but also sharing the rewards um, together and sharing the journey and experience together. And so for me as a 15 year real estate veteran uh, and entrepreneur, um, this is in approaching 39 years old in about another 24 hours. Um, this was really uh, this moment in time and this particular webinar, this podcast, this live stream was super important for me to do today because as I reflect at this whole opportunity, mind you guys, I know you guys are seeing it from the outside in. I'm living this every day inside out. And so is my team, so is my family. And the fact that we've built something historic and I wanna share with you a lot of the moving parts. I wanna share with you a lot of our future vision. I wanna share with you a lot of what we accomplished. And it's something, um, in my opinion, to super, that I'm proud of, and for us all to be proud of, to have built an economic infrastructure uh, that is regulated in this way, that is transparent, sophisticated in this way. Um, I'm gonna break down some of the components uh, of the fund. Um, but so yeah, to, to, to kind of get past the, the model, and I wanna share, I'm gonna actually start illustrating. Part of what I want to do is teach a little bit and give us a really, a real perspective on, on TREF and what it really means to the community and uh, what it means for our history and, and how we project uh, up to 24% returns, IRR, on our fund, right? So outside the history and the emotional impact, there also is an opportunity for significant or reasonable financial impact. So here's kind of been like how I look at the fund the opportunity, right? So. We talk about, and Jane, make sure you can see me over here, please. Um, we talk about, uh, here's this line, right, of economic empowerment and what we call group economics, right? Group economics or Ujama or uh, collective economics or cooperative economics. So we have this line of group economics. And 
within my community, right, as a black man, as African man in America, um, there's only been two, you know, um, there's been, again, many communities, but there's been the Black Wall Street era, which was like 1921, right, the Black Wall Street era. Uh, the Black Wall Street Tulsa, Oklahoma was founded by O.W. Gurley and J.B. Stafford. Uh, O.W. Gurley was a Mississippi entrepreneur who migrated to Tulsa Town or Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then bought his first 40 acres of land, right? And then around 1919, also uh, in America, there was the Marcus Garvey movement and the UNIA movement. So Marcus Garvey sold shares of his company to the public, majority black people, and he raised uh, what's equivalent to, I believe, like, he raised $800,000, I believe, a little more than $800,000, right, which is equivalent to, like, $11 million today. So Marcus Garvey did that back in 1919. He had a company called the Black Star Line and sold shares of his company to the public so that he, could, he and we could raise money together to be able to facilitate our ideas, right? And so in Black, Wall Street, in Black Wall Street of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and other communities, entrepreneurs gathered together to develop, restore, and to practice in group economics within our community, right? So from 1919 and 1921, in that era, and then after the Great Depression, regulations changed, from that era, within the Black or what I call the African community in America, What we then, up until current day, right, up until 2018, for the African community in America or the indigenous community, the black community, the African descendants of slaves, however you want to word and categorize this community, the Moorish community, right, those who recognize or identify with being black or, or, or of African descent, um, in this community from 1919 to 1921, the way that we practice group economics had changed from actual equity in economics into the donation model, right? So it changed into donations, right, of organizations. It changed into tithe and offering, right? Strictly around tithe and offering and the church model, right? It changed into Kickstarters, into GoFundMes. It changed into nonprofits. So the only way that we as a community effectively executed any kind of group economics or economic change was through that of the donation model, right? Which, again, allowed us to pull our dollars together, but it was not in a particularly equitable way, where the people that invested the dollars, the community, the church members, et cetera, the nonprofit members, they would invest the dollars in, and, and, and sometimes, and many times, a good deed will get done. Sometimes, no good deed will get done. But they'll invest the money in, but there was never a profit coming back out, right? Or even an opportunity for profit to come back out, or the opportunity for what we call equity and ownership. So, as Jay Morrison became woke, in like 2014-ish, 2014, 2015, Jay Morrison became woke. Woke meaning conscious of our political oppression, economic exploitation, and social degradation, conscious of how government redlining affected our community, conscious of how our post a traumatic slavery disorder has affected my community, conscious of how the vestiges and residuals of our dehumanization, demoralization, of Cointel Pro, of Jim Crow, of our colonization, of our, of our enslavement, and, and, and all that trauma, conscious of that, that being a major reason for the repair need of, of, my, of my community, right? And so understanding that need of my community and understanding that it's no one else's job to repair my community other than me and the members of my community. And we take all uh, support, help, uh, and all that, but it's not someone else's job, right? So all uh, extra contributions of the right frequency are welcomes, but I realized that as a woke man, as a real estate leader, as a business leader, and as someone with capacity, I realized between 2014 and 2015, especially after the Mike, Mike Brown murder, the Eric Garner murder, the 
Freddie Gray, Murder, and Sandra Bland, and so many others. During that time, I started taking to the ground and, and was being active um, in regards to our social fight and our fight for justice and human rights. And so during this time on a panel, um, the thought was brought to, as a solution for our community, to create a Black Wall Street. And this happened in about 2015 during a Freddie Gray uprising. I'm giving you guys context to the mission of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, right? And this is our portfolio built by the first and largest black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of America in real life, right? So I'm not talking about uh, theoretical. These aren't renderings of things that we hope to do. These are things that we actually have done on the way to do more in regards to building out uh, not just real estate assets, but a real estate investment firm, a real estate investing crowd equity fund that allows us to participate in investing together for as little as $500, where investors and partners, the equity partners, receive an 8% preferred return and 50% prorated share of the profits, right? Those returns only come when the entire portfolio and the business is profitable. We're going to get to that in a second. But what we want to show is that in building up our community, so far it's been nearly 100 years that we've taken equitable economic direction and equitable economic infrastructure being built. So in 2015, I thought, started with the idea of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. In 2016, we started the LLC and the filing process. And between 2016 to June 1st of 2018, on a history and anniversary of the Black Wall Street bombing and massacre, we launched an IPO. We offered the public shares of our company of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund in June 1st of 2018. And although the website crashed a couple times, and um, although it was all new, we were pioneering and trailblazing, during June 1st and over that, that next week, we raised several million dollars that shocked everyone, went viral, and um, caused an aurora through social media that a black-owned company with a vision for group economics literally stopped talking about it, went through the filing process over two years, did the due diligence, did the work, made the time and resource and capital investment to pull it off and literally launch a public company called the Tulsa Real Estate Fund to the public at $50 per share. No stock exchanges or brokers needed. We went straight from company to the public and raised several million dollars our first week, nearly $8.6 million to date. You may have seen reports that said 10 or $12 million. Those are based on the capital commitments that we got through our software that report a certain number, but actual cash money for the fund and our partners to start this company with up to date 8.6 million and counting, right? And you can, yes, be a partner in our fund today, starting now, right now, yesterday. But the point is not about a, a pitch to partner with us or to join us or to have equity with us. I wanna to explain to you guys the history and the mission and the movement of the fund. So mind you, we took on something that's not been done in 100 years, nearly 100 years within our community. We took on something that nearly been done in 100 years with no example, no role model, no pioneer, no trailblazer to follow. Just, again, this is not about self-kudos or, or puffery. I'm talking about not me. I'm talking about the staff members. I'm talking about the investment partners, the 10,000 plus people that believed in this opportunity to stop talking about what everyone can do for us and doing for ourselves. And the people that are astute enough, who are wise enough, financially mature enough to know that if we haven't done it in 100 years, we cannot expect returns overnight and expect a, um, a grand slam overnight. So with our funds, now we're in 2019, our fund's been about 15 or 16 months active. And with our fund, we have acquired this portfolio of loan opportunities, deals that we funded, deals that we've directly acquired, deals that we have uh, done blanket loans, we've done joint ventures, we've done refinances. We have, in, 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 in effect, it's over 100 doors, Class A office space, in opportunity zones, etc. We have, in, in, in fact, 
used our leverage and our unique position in the real estate industry and the real estate market to bring in opportunities that we believe could be profitable for the fund, either partic participating as a private lender or participating as a owner occupant, not owner occupant, but as a direct investment or as a developer, right? So over the last 15 or 16 months, we put our company together. Here's a part, um, um, two parts I'm most proud of. So during this process, what you gotta understand is that we built out the personnel and the people. We just, we just put in uh, four new offer letters last week of bringing in the staff that we need in order to build out this company at scale. So we're super excited that not only did we just create this fund and this way to invest together and to acquire or develop some real estate, but we put together the personnel, the processes, and the procedures needed to run this company at scale. And so what we've been doing is not just investing in real estate, but investing in the business of doing real estate. And so we are excited about our new compliance manager coming on board, our investor relations manager. We're excited about our portfolio manager, our real estate associates, our administrators, our compliance officers, our treasurers, our third-party administrators, our accountants, our SEC attorneys, our business and, and, and uh, employment attorneys. There's a lot of moving parts to functioning this fund with the goal of not just being at 8.6 million. Our market cap is $50 million. This is our market cap. Our goal is to fulfill our $50 million market cap and go on into investing into these opportunities and restoring our community and empowering others who are looking to do real estate deals in our community, right? So, and that's just fund one of God willing, many. And so what we've done is that we've been able to, I wanna show you some of our assets. There's different hold periods on each asset, right? These, some of these assets, will the capital will recycle out faster than others. I think right now on uh, our Lake Charles property, we have, uh, we're actually have already gotten a, um, uh, what's it called? Excuse my language. <laughs> Excuse my, my thought. Um, on our Nap Street property, they have asked for their payoff. That's what I'm, I'm about to say clear to close. But they've gotten their payoff from us. So we were a lender on this property. They're now refinancing us out. And there's now going to be a payoff to us from the new mortgage company that's taken over this asset. This asset on a seven-month hold, I think we're in a month like eight or nine right now, on a seven-month hold with a 52%, 52% IRR. Well, even at eight or nine or ten months, we're still at a 40% plus IRR just on this asset, right? Which was looking to get paid off in the next coming days as we've helped them, uh, this, this black woman... She financed this 14 unit, the renovations and the acquisition of this building. And we helped her do so creatively and we did it at speed, right? We did it responsibly. So that was one opportunity. So as this investment comes back to us, plus our fees in this deal, we now bring that money back to the company, to the business, right? This one deal doesn't make the whole business profitable as the business has capital out on other investments and the business is operating. But as these different deals cash out, we then reinvest them back into the market, into new deals, and we continue to turn the money over until these opportunities all become profitable for the business. Right? So I want to give you a little bit of our business model. So now we put together over 300 years of staff and vendor experience right behind the fund. And now what we're going to be announcing in November, we're excited to tell you guys about, again, this is Treff Talks Tuesday. We're talking all things Treff. Like this is a historic company. A company has not been built and offered this way in the last 100 years. And so with this company, I want to show everyone like what we're actually doing behind the scenes in one of our big plays right now is what you all have seen, TLC, the Legacy Center, AKA the Black House. The Black House is gonna be significant to us as you see it here because 
with the Black House, we have been in talks and are um, a pen stroke away from the opportunity with the Black House with this 30,000 square foot building. Right, on this 2.6 acres of campus in an opportunity zone, us as TREF, the tenants, right? So TREF Legacy Center, the tenants, or excuse me, not the tenants, the, the, uh, the owner, the landlord, Tulsa Real Estate Fund is the fund that acquired and developed this building, which is still in development. We're finishing furnishings now on phase one and phase two will be completed by uh, the second quarter of 2019. But we as the landlord have uh, been in talks and negotiations and ironing out the business model to be able to fully lease this out on a master lease. And we'll show you what this means and why it's such a big deal. We're, we're um, very close to inking a master lease opportunity on a five to 10 year lease on the entire 30,000 square foot building. That master lease opportunity on this investment and this asset, and we're now investing about 3.5 million. We anticipate at tops 3.7 million into the acquisition and develop of the Legacy Center. And now with this master lease, with the net operating income that we're going to bring in, our profits, or rental income from leasing out the whole 30,000 square feet, at our going cap rate, it increases our building value to about 7.3 to $8 million. Just by us bringing on this new tenant and this master lease. So what this means is we'll be all in on investment about 3.7 and we'll be able to sell or cash out at 7.3 to 8 million, or we'll be able to refinance out at about 80% of the 7.3 or 8 million. So even at 80% of, of seven, we're at 5.6 million, we can refinance, pay off our full 3.7 million we invested, bring that all the way back to the fund, the full 3 million we invested, and still have about 1.8 million dollars uh, of investment to come back to the fund off the refinance. And off that 1.8, be able to then reinvest that back into the market or if the fund be profitable, pay out dividends to investors. So why this is so significant is because with us having raised $8.6 million to have nearly half over probably 40% of our capital invested into this development opportunity and to be able to secure an anchor tenant and be able to secure uh, the right refinance leverage, we'll be able to, from a cash on cash investment standpoint, really be able to do well on this opportunity. And because it represents so much of our invested capital, that with our three year hold on our 98 units in Macon and our projected IRR of 61%, that on Knapp Street coming back, that on our less than one year hold on our uh, New Orleans Katrina properties and the different assets under our fund, even with the assets that are cutting it tight because they didn't, they didn't perform how we expected them to, that average IRR, if we can pull off our refi, well, this is what's called a value add opportunity and a value add and refi exit opportunity on this asset and hit close to our targets on our other assets, and stay on pace of those targets, we'll be looking at an overall 24% uh, projected IRR. No guarantees, of course, but we'll be looking at a projected 24% IRR um, or hopefully more in the next three to five years in the fund. So we're talking about giving everyone an opportunity to invest as little as $500 Not donation, right? So not what we're used to, not donation, not GoFundMe, not collection plea, not that right now. There's a time and place for those things. I'm not knocking those things. But I'm talking about a specific opportunity to give and partake in equity. So it's not just to, to, to give, but actually to get equity and ownership and future profit shares 
future ROI and profit share of a company that's going to do this kind of work and expand on this kind of work. So what I'm, what I'm showing, and I guess what I'm excited about as a 38-year-old, soon-to-be 39-year-old entrepreneur, what I'm excited about is the fact that where there was no model and where I could have got stuck at just visionary, right? So many of us be caught just in our ideas. Like, oh man, that's a good idea. That's a good app. That's a good website. That's a good idea. We walked past just the idea stage in 2015. We got the work in 2016 and got to the filing and incorporation and infrastructure building stage. Then we walked all the way through that with all the challenges and got into the actual launch stage June 1st of 2018. And then we just didn't stop there with the launch. We then walked through all the obstacles because our fun being new, because our fun being viral, because our fun being whatever, because of me being the unlikely of sources of fund managers, because I didn't come in a pretty box with a red bow on it. But I had the heart and the compassion and the capacity to be able to do this, but I did it without the traditional financial bells and whistles and, and, and letters behind my name. And because I'm an ex-felon and because I've had a bankruptcy and because I've went through life and a divorce and because I'm a real human with who's really uh, vulnerable, transparent about his uh, experiences or because of this just being new for the self-esteem of our community, understanding that there's things that we can do for ourselves without any tricks involved. Uh, there was a lot of scrutiny of our fund the first uh, several months. Um, some of that scrutiny um, may have warranted uh, or inspired, or may not have, just on our own accord, uh, investigations from the SEC and from the DOJ, Department of Justice. We went through over fifty thousand dollars, excuse me, fifty thousand emails, and we had to put all our financials and transcripts. Right, like this is all public knowledge. It's all in our filing. I'm not saying anything that's not publicly. That's public knowledge. So we went through uh, these investigations. The DOJ, as of latest, said they were ceasing their investigation. Um, but kept the right to always open it back up if they chose, but said for the time they were ceasing their investigation and were still um, having talks and interviews with the SEC just in regards to disclosing all our documents, right? No one's accused us, accused us of anything, but we had to, had to open our books and disclose our documents. So I'm always very open and transparent about our funds, about our audit, about our financials, and all that stuff is online. You go to sec.gov, search host real estate fund, and you will see our entire 1A filings, our 1U, and operating agreement, subscription memorandum, all that, right? All the documents in our fund is all there. It's all there for everybody to get. Even through our website, you can see many of these documents. I'm telling you guys all this history and even these challenges because as a 39-year entrepreneur, well, soon to be 39-year-old entrepreneur, I'm proud of uh, what we as an organization have been able to stand up to and stand up for. Um, from my partner and my wife to every single staff member to all those behind the scenes who don't get much recognition because Jay's so loud and Jay's so big. Um, and to our new staff that are coming on board. I'm extremely excited about the opportunities to work with uh, you know, new talent and new entrepreneurs and to continue to grow this company um, through our $50 million cap and to our next raises. But when you look at it in a historical context, uh, in our trajectory, see, if you are an entrepreneur, if you know any entrepreneurs closely, you know that starting a new business, right now we've been in business about 16 months from full operations. So we're talking about in 16 months building out a staff, in 16 months chasing uh, or, uh, uh, or driving through challenges, in 16 months building out a multi-million, like how many people have had the ability and the opportunity to be able to pull together a, a national fund and then go out and actually acquire, mind you, these are funded someone else's dreams and deals. Funded someone else's dreams and deals. Funded someone else's dreams and deals. Black developer here in Atlanta. Black woman developer here in, in New Orleans. Black woman developer in Lake Charles. Black in syndicator and investor and developer out of LA who bought a, a, a making property to us. Black developer in Nashville. Black developer here out of Atlanta, part of our, our, our internal management, student housing units, uh, direct acquisition for us. Black developer in Ohio. 
Like these are the things that we've done leveraging this inspiration from our ancestors and what they did in their real lives before us. These were the trailblazers and pioneers that gave us any kind of blueprint to be able to do the same thing or close to it in our life. So we can't just watch The Watchmen or see shows about Black Wall Street or group economics or see Marcus Garvey or Malcolm X or Dr. King and, you know, Harriet and all these, you know, blockbuster, you know, uh, black empowerment shows, right? And our fund is rooted in that. Our fund, uh, we, we take, it, you know, we take investment from all ethnicities, walks of life. We look for the support of, of everyone. Um, our mission is to be a fund that helps the urban community, uh, blighted communities, minority investors and developers, and to be able to restore our community, right? So for us to have built this business model, which as a CEO and a fiduciary and a custodian of this fund, I feel very, very uh, good about our, our progress and the, the focus of the team to be able to get this right, right? Like it's a lot of pressure. It's something we really want to do is get this opportunity right. So for us to just be in this position, talking to you right now, as I'm approaching 39, and the fund going into the Legacy Center grand opening coming up in November and December, and the opportunity to have this economic empowerment center, this co-working space, this media center, under our management with a master lease that was gonna service as a financial empowerment model to be able to educate and train our community through this building and give us the resources for leverage and for credit and for financing and for insurances and for entrepreneurship and for self-development and business etiquette, to be able to teach and give us resources out of the Legacy Center where our community can build their legacy out of this building. But this building also provide a master lease to our fund so that we can be able to bring in reasonable returns for our investors and then be able to go back out and pull that capital back into the fund and raise more capital from new investors on new projects and go out and reach and, 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 and fund and finance and empower and support so many other developers on multi-units, on apartment complexes, on student housing, on strip malls, on these opportunities. I feel damn good and damn proud and, and I'm happy that so many of you all could be a part of it with me and with us. This is an opportunity. Now, mind you, the biggest uh, concern, the biggest misconception, the biggest challenge we've had with us and you, our partners, our future partners, is us wanting to try to accomplish 100 years worth of progress in two years. We can't do it that fast. And us understanding that real estate investing, real estate development, it's all long ball. It's a long man's game, long woman's game. These are typically long-term investments. It's not a fix and flip fund. If we're gonna restore our communities, we gotta, we gotta figure out how we all chip in, what we all can afford to partake in owning equity and shares together with a long-term investment strategy so we can build a legacy together for us, our last name, and for our community. That's the mission in the heart of the fund. That it shouldn't be all on Jay Morrison, it shouldn't be all on Oprah, it shouldn't be all on Jay-Z, it shouldn't be all LeBron James because someone's wealthy or uber rich or a billionaire, they should come save us. I believe that we all should chip in to the fullest of our own capacity to be able to save ourselves. For us to meet our market cap of 50 million, we need nearly 40 million dollars to meet our market cap of 50 million from the 8.6 million that we're at. $40 million is 40,000 of us investing an average of $1,000. It's not hard work. It really isn't for us to achieve the things we want to say we want to achieve. It's about us getting past our dreams and thoughts and ideas and bringing together real intentionality to make it happen. That's all I'm trying to show us. What I'm proud about is intentionality, family. I'm not saying that our fund is the biggest fund in the country. It's not. It's the largest black-owned crowdfunder in the history of the country. That is a fact. Our fund isn't the most, we haven't performed or paid, or paid any dividends yet. We haven't. Our assets are still being developed. It's hard to pay dividends when you have projects that are still being developed. They don't get developed that fast. And when you have mortgages that still have one-year terms on them. So no, we have not paid our investors 
dividends yet in our 16 months. We haven't, unfortunately. But give us the opportunity and have the opportunity to perform in a legacy play like other funds. I believe that we are in the right space. I believe that we are on target. Our projections are sound. Our audit is clear. Our financials are transparent. Our compliance is transparent. We've disclosed and cooperated with everything we have to cooperate with. We're just out here setting the bar and setting the trend and showing what intentionality looks like. This is just a board based on 16 months. What would this board look like of a resume in 16 years? What would this board look like in the next 160 months? In the next six years? We have to set realistic expectations as cooperative entrepreneurs. If we're going to do group economics together, and collective economics together, and I'm not saying it in any defense, I'm just saying it in education. It's the only way we win. Like it doesn't, I'm not personally, um, my personal attachment to the fund is us winning. That's the personal attachment. It's not one of those businesses where it's a, a Jay Morrison, like I have other businesses, other successful businesses, other multi-million dollar businesses. I've run them for years. So that's not the issue. The thing is that I believe in the market, we figure some things out. And we have little and few competition in this space. So it's a unique opportunity for us. Our unique selling proposition is our calling to do this work, our head start in doing this work, our sincerity to do this work, and that doesn't take many of us to make a big impact. 40,000 of us, 50,000 of us is not a lot of us, literally 0.09% of the African community in America and 0.002% of the American community at large. It does not take a lot of people to make big impact. It's all about intentionality. And so that's what I want to um, offer you all tonight and show you all how there's a real path and real plan for all of our invested partners to achieve a projected 24% IRR. Um, we hope to do this in the next three to five years of the fund. Um, we believe that we, we have opportunity if we're performing as fast as we think, to be able to pay back dividends way sooner than a three-year hold, we think we can hit you know, more aggressive targets, but we want to make sure we say everything in a compliant way, and we don't want to overpromise. We don't want to, you know, we'd rather uh, underpromise and overdeliver. but I just wanted to give you guys a real insight, heart to heart, like my last day being 38, before I'm 39, on my journey to 40, I want to give you guys a heart to heart for me, what it means to me as a, a man in my community, as an entrepreneur, as someone that's had real successes in business, have real failures in business, who has successes in life, failures in life, I've, I've kind of seen it all. I've seen, I mean, not all, all, but I've seen a damn good bit of it. And um, it's super exciting to see a business model like this come to life. You're going to be really excited about the new personnel we're bringing in. Again, just made four new staff hires over the last uh, week or so. Uh, we got two or three more staff hires to make, so we're beefing up the team. We understand where we got to go. We have a good financial model. We have a great ears and ends to the market. We have uh, our sister company, J. Morrison Academy, has over 80,000 students educated all over the country. So we get real estate opportunities. We don't have a lack of real estate opportunities in our fund. That's the other part of our secret sauce. And because of our corner classes and our other community work, we have real ends to the same communities that are being gentrified. So where other funds are kind of squirming around looking for deals, we get deals and opportunities. It's not our problem. Right now, it's all about solidifying our infrastructure, personnel, process, procedures, and boom, path forward. And much of that's going to start with the anchoring of the Legacy Center and our next transition as a fund. So I do want to, for all of you all who may have more questions, we have frequently asked questions on our website. You guys can go to TulsaRealEstateFund.com. Um, you also go to our website to see about submitting your, your deals or opportunities, but as well to become an investment partner with us, an equity partner with us, and join the Tulsa Real Estate Fund movement. Like, this is our time, our call to action to be intentional about our legacy and understanding. I wanted to just try to give you guys some insight of our history, our mission, our performance, our business model, right? And just kind of give you a quick overview that 
we are approaching this as thoroughly, as diligently, and as prudently as possible. Like, this isn't some smack-together operation. This, this is something that we're looking for the long haul. What does this look like 16 years from now? What does this look like 160 years from now in regards to a real economic infrastructure that represents our community root economic roots and value, right? And so, guys, again, TulsaRealEstateFund.com for you all to log on um, and to see about investing with us. We self-accreditate. Minimum investment is $500, you can invest a thousand, twenty five hundred. I invested ten thousand into the fund, right? Even though I'm the fund manager and fund fiduciary and CEO, I still put my money where my mouth was and invested in the actual Tulsa Real Estate Fund as we go out and support the community. So those again, entrepreneurs who want to match me, match me. Let's turn up. Let's invest together. Um, you know, we we have uh, our monthly reporting. You'll see our audits. You'll see our subscriptions. This is an opportunity to join the movement as we go out and create more opportunity within our own community, group economics in real life, the Black Wall Street model in real life. Before I close, King Jane, uh, we're on Facebook live streaming and IG live. I'd love to take a couple questions from you guys and not just be a rant session. Take a few questions. Anybody on IG or Facebook? In the meantime, we got a people. Killer Mitchell says, I'm proud of you, Jay. It's the right direction. Brandon Rothschild says, I gravitate to Jay Morrison's spirit. He's the real deal. Thank you, Brandon. King Brandon. Toya Woods. I believe in you, King. That's why I'm here. So let's um, work. Like, that's what I'm saying. Let's stop. Let's, let's work. Like, we're not going nowhere. We're going to put in the work. We're going to do what we got to do. Um, God willing, we believe that we, we, we called to do this. It's our time. I'll uh, just see if we have any questions on uh, live. You can scroll up, King Neutron, see if there's any live at the bottom. If not on Facebook, if not, we're gonna get out of here. Just want to give What's you guys an opportunity to talk back. Any new project you're working on? Somebody asked, "What's the return on investment?" Yep. So our preferred return is eight percent. What that means is that every investor is due eight percent after the one-year lockup, paid out quarterly upon profitability. So as the funds as a fund is developing assets, there's typically not profits when you're developing assets and developing the business. So after the assets are developed and the fund becomes profitable from the exit of those assets, everyone is due an accumulating 8%, right? So that's on every year, 8% on every year, plus 50% of prorated, uh, your prorated share of profits. Hope that makes sense. Can I invest now? Yes, you can. You can invest right now. You can invest yesterday if you were on time. But right now, TulsaRealEstateFund.com. And we do have some new projects. We have uh, a 33-unit building we're looking at right now in underwriting. We have a, a couple developments in the Midwest that we're looking at. We have a Los Angeles development that just came across our desk today from our attorney. Um, so we have several opportunities that are always across our desk that we are looking to either acquire and, and in many cases, partner, joint venture, or to finance, right? Our goal is not to go buy up all the real estate. That's a very heavy thing to do. Um, but we do want to finance, fund, and use our strategies to help people take down more deals. Uh, Ali Kofi said, if I do have a deal, I'm looking to get funded. What all am I required to do? Uh, if, if you have an opportunity that you want a capital partner for, go to TulsaRealEstateFund.com, submit a deal tab, and you will fill out the deal application, opportunity application. That's all? All right. So, guys, appreciate you. Um, I'll be coming back every Tuesday myself or one of our staff members. I'll be introducing you to some more of our, our staff um, and some of the new additions to, to TREF. Uh, we'll be talking about some of our new updates on our Legacy Center or other assets. We'll be showcasing and highlighting new investment opportunities and assets and um, just keeping everybody up to date weekly. It's time to get the energy back. It's time to, you know, uh, we had a season of being, um, you know, uh, hibernating, if you will, but hibernating in, 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 in operational functions and just really um, building the business out. That's it. As an entrepreneur, there's a time for, you know, flash, and there's a time for branding, there's a time for marketing, there's a time for, you know, external 
uh, energy and there's also time for internal energy and getting your infrastructure together and your operations together and your your, your procedures and your personnel together. So, um, you know, coming out of that kind of huddle, I feel really good about uh, the movement direction of the company. After you invest, what is the next step? After you invest, uh, you pay attention. You look at your email, your investor portfolio updates. Um, you follow the fund and movement. Uh, we'll take you through how you get your certificate, and you'll also know who your third-party administrator is, and you know where you get your shares. You'll look out for your your yearly uh, tax uh, statements, your K ones, etc. So all that happens as, as you invest, you you get your updates, and you get you know you partake in again the passive opportunity of investing into the fund. What is the stock symbol for Tulsa? There is no stock symbol. We are not on any uh, any brokerage or exchange. Um, we are direct to public. So our symbol is Treff Life and a T-R-E-F. So you guys can, you guys can uh, again, uh, buy shares, units of the company at TulsaRealEstateFund.com, $50 per share, minimum 10 shares. As simple as that. And you actually own equity. You own shares. You own mem memberships or units in the company. Does your team need any help? I'm an attorney in Chicago, and I'm all about real estate. I'm in Atlanta at least once a month. Oh, yeah, for all career opportunities, you can go to our website as well, uh, TulsaRealEstateFund.com. Um, you'll see a careers tab. For anybody that's into being a marketing intern, looking for some interns on our marketing team, you can email careers at TulsaRealEstateFund.com, marketing interns only. Anyone else, you guys can go to TulsaRealEstateFund.com, click, click the careers tab, and you guys can apply for different positions that you see there. Just level up, level up. All right, guys, so I'm not going to hold you tonight, man. Thank you for coming out at 6 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday. Um, we're going to be kicking up and getting <laughs> caught up. says, how can I talk directly to Jay? Who said that? Brandon Rothschild. How can you talk directly to me? Well, you start where you start. And you can get a consultation, or if you got some value to offer, the team will assess that. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not possible to get at, but... There's, there's plenty of people to field your, your inquiry, your call, your contribution. Someone said, my job isn't on the books, so if I invest in Tulsa, will Uncle Sam try to get a piece of my 8%? If you invest in Tulsa, um, you are on the books. <laughs> you are on the books on the books. And so any profits that you receive from your investment, they will be, be taxable, um, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, you're, you're officially on the books if you're investing in Tulsa. And you, you need to be accredited, and, and I think you legitimizing that job might help with all that. <laughs> Do you have to be 18 to invest? Um, I believe so. Um, only way you can invest through as a minor is through your guardian or custodian. So you can invest as a minor, but you need to have an um, adult involved. Brandon is really adamant about getting a link. How, they, how, maybe, how does he get to coaching? All right, Brandon. Um, so, yeah, outside of you guys investing with us, obviously we have a school, the Jay Morrison Academy, where we teach this, we train on this. We have private families that we mentor and coach. We do private sit-downs at your home or your business. We do half-hour discoveries over FaceTime or Skype. All that's available to you. Um, if you guys have any questions about how to learn more about actually doing this, um, go to uh, excuse me, jmorrisonacademy.com. You'll see a mentorship application, fill out the application. There's also our online school, uh, over 237 lectures um, in our online school, weekly mentorship calls, certification in real estate, certification in business, certification in credit, all at jmorrisonacademy.com. But if you want a one-on-one -on -one with me or you want me to do a portfolio assessment for you um, or help your family guide you guys in the portfolio building, me or my, my team, um, you got to fill out the mentorship application at jmorrisonacademy.com. Um, it's probably your best way. You might get lucky if you DM me on Instagram. I'll, re I'll respond back sometimes. If it's about money, I typically respond back. Yeah. <laughs> Just being honest. <laughs> well, again, guys, thank y'all for being here with me, man. Super exciting. Listen, I started in this business at 25 years old. Well, that's when I got serious about it, 25 years old. My first entry into mortgages was 2002. I was 22 years old, on parole, uh, closed about three or four mortgage deals on parole, left the mortgage industry, went back to the streets for three more years, 
walked away from the streets of, um, of North New Jersey, Somerville, New Jersey in 2005, got in real estate full time as a landlord, as a loan officer, as a realtor, began to be a celebrity realtor by 2002, working for Sotheby's International Realty, also the real estate expert for the NBC, uh, NBC Today Show, made my first million before 28, um, and I built this national presence in real estate but for me to start as a 25-year-old, young, naive real estate entrepreneur and now to look 14 years later to have founded and now managed the first and largest black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of our country um, just speaks feats, one, to God's grace, his mercy, um, what his power can do, um, and two, what we all can do when we put our mind to something. This is my mind to the solutions, my mind to doing something and being intentional about it. So uh, for all my young real estate investors, entrepreneurs, those who think, oh, what you can't do because of a college education, because of your felonies, because of your background, because of your upbringing. I mean, I literally was a Section 8 kid, a welfare kid, a WIC kid, and we're now managing uh, over 100 units in our portfolio. I mean, this is things that we can do in real life. Um, again, not saying it's the biggest portfolio in the world, not saying I'm the most accomplished, the most successful, but what I am saying is, is I am who I am. I've done what I've done as you are who you are and you've done how you've done. Um, what I can say I've done is I have been intentional about creating a solution for my community and not just creating it, but living it and walking out, walking it out and risking everything on the front line as a trailblazing pioneer to pull this off, not just for myself and my accolades, but for my actual community. Like I risked everything. I risked the dollars, I risked the reputation, I risked the, 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 the legal implications. I risked everything to take a risk that in a hundred years, no one has taken. Entrepreneur, celebrity, athlete, politician, political figure, or otherwise. Um, not saying that again as puffery or to be boastful. What I'm saying is, is that reality. That is my reality. Because many people told me, don't do this. Don't take the risk. Don't offer minimum investments at 500. I'm going to get headaches. Don't risk my freedom. Don't risk trying to unify black people and black economics like don't do that the government's going to be watching don't do that cointel pro don't do that black identity uh, black identity extremists don't do that because of our history don't do that because what happens to our leaders don't y'all think that i'm wise enough and astute enough and cultured enough to know all the implications that come with doing what this is in real life like you could play on instagram but no, this is group economics. This is Black Wall Street in real life. And so I know the risk that I and my family take doing this. And so we stand on our decision and we stand on um, and we stand on our validation, if you will, of, of, of our love and our commitment to be servant leaders. Like that's all this is, is servant leadership. Is like I could easily create any kind of real estate fund. I could easily only went to accredited or wealthy people. I chose this model to include the crowd, the working class person, because I come from that background and I know that's the person that needs a say so, who needs equity, who needs some ownership in the equation. It's not just for rappers and ball players and actors to have ownership in the situation, in the equation. It's time that the working class, the everyday person, quote unquote, that we all have an opportunity to participate in our own advancement, our own solutions, and have buy-in of our own communities. And so outside of a donation or Kickstarter or collection plate, it's time that we have buy-in in our communities. So I created a model to give us buy-in in our communities that's equitable, that's transparent, that's regulated, and that we hope, pray, and we work towards being profitable for all of us. That's the play. All right, guys. See you next week. Toast Talk. Tref Talks Tuesdays. T-R-E-F. Tref Life. ToastRealEstateFund.com. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Don't forget our Facebook. Y'all believe our Facebook hanging. Instagram, like 130,000 followers. Facebook's like, eh. Facebook, Tulsa Real Estate Fund, LLC. YouTube, Tulsa Real Estate Fund, LLC. Instagram, at Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Thanks, guys.